afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for February 11th, Thursday, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern. Try going out when you can and watching part of you. The sky, the ocean, the trees, all the animals, the entire earth. Celebrate all of it. Watch how mysteriously and quickly your greatest dreams start manifesting for you. Nature always gives back in great abundance to those who open themselves up to it. How many of us on this planet don't even notice it? We're so distracted about everything externally that we don't notice it. We're so focused on yesterday and tomorrow that we just don't understand. I, I don't think we really understand the greatest goodness is always awaiting us in the moment. The magic behind nature always reveals itself so easily and effortlessly. When you sit and watch things, you're not judging. You leave the ego mind. It's, it's not even needed. You see, this is another avenue for, we, for us to leave the mind alone, where we just take it all in, which is part of us. Most of us, you know, we don't feel, we, we get guilty because, well, while I'm not doing anything, I'm just sitting here watching, taking it all in. But how many people do you see doing that? Really, I mean, just anywhere, in your communities, anywhere, where people are just being, they're taking it all in. They aren't concerned about having to do this, having to do that, get this, get that, get this, get that. They're just in a quiet being. So you watch how you move, which means not your body, but the soul within you, the spirit, the higher self, is being part of everything. So you watch the birds, you watch any animals, you watch bugs, it doesn't matter. And you watch how they move, you watch how they exist, because they're part of you. So it's always a celebration, if and when we decide to look at ourselves from different perspectives, different aspects. Trust is the ultimate lubricant. Trust is all about fearing less and loving more. Trust is the ultimate lubricant that makes everything in this life easier. It makes every relationship flow smoothly. It attracts more financial abundance and allows for the feelings of real freedom, grace, and gratitude in our lives. Trust is essent its essential core foundation to moving energy into form, creating a reality, manifesting that life we truly love. It is the most healing, expansive, and relaxing energy which causes our hearts to open wide so we are emotionally able to receive our dreams and desires. When life is flowing fluidly and freely, it's because trust 
is there growing and expanding inside our hearts. The reason why trust is the ultimate lubricant is because it allows those tight, fearful, rusty memories in our past to loosen up, laugh, and be free again. When we stop and apply trust to an untrusting person or situation, we create the possibility for deep healing and transformation. When we stop and apply trust to an untrusting person or situation, we treat, we create the possibility for deep healing and transformation. It gives others permission to have faults, be human, and not be so stuck in this 3D reality. Perhaps the best thing that you may find about trust is that it is a naturally reciprocal, highly addictive, and very contagious. The more we use it, the more we become used, used by it, and the more fluid our lives become. In this wild, crazy, roller coaster, unpredictable world, we've created a deep emotional need for trust. We need and require trust to be part of our lives. Trusting in ourselves and in our future. With so many life changes, distractions, and daily difficulties to deal with, the tendency to entertain doubt, fear, and skepticism can become the rusty norm. Yet it is the challenge from this pushing and pulling within ourselves that invites us to dive deeper inside so that eventually we explore what it's like to trust 100% in ourselves, 100% in ourselves. How many of us can really, really do this? Within this level of complete trust, we discover the doorway to the divine. We release our grip on our ego and reveal the divine permanent essence that is hidden deep within our being. Without the rocking push and pull of life, we wouldn't be driven to move beyond the mind and fall deeply into our spiritual essence. It is from the complete letting go of the outer that we can surrender and relax into the inner. And this relaxation into our core essence is the moment when true inner peace and radical deep inner healing occurs. When ego is lost, limit is lost. You become infinite, kind, beautiful. Yogi Bhajan. As we mature in this life, we come to realize that we must continue growing deeper in trust if we are to survive. That's right. Our physical survival is actually based on trust because it's this heart-opening soul welcoming energy which attracts the right people, situations, and abundant income to enter our lives. Trust allows us to see the golden opportunities sitting right in front of our face, giving space for greater abundance to find its way into our future. The more trust we can tap into, the more successful we are at naturally being a healthy, radiant, abundant, loving, attractive being, mankind, human. The more often we can surrender to the feeling of trust, the more it heals our hearts, souls, and lives. Simply feeling the feeling of trusting in life relaxes our body, our entire body, And this impacts the energy inside everyone around us. Trust is so powerful, 
it can transform the most impoverished, challenged life into the sweetest soul opening blossom. When trust is given priority over fear, it can shine a light onto our entire life path ahead. Even if the mind has blinders on and is lost in darkness, even when you think that no one can be trusted in life, that small candlelight flame of trust never completely blows out. It is always there, lit inside the core of our spiritual essence, ready to burn brighter. Even when we think there is no hope, possibility, or life worth living for. Only in the darkness can you see the stars. Only in the darkness. Martin Luther King, Jr. Ultimately, remember that there is no thought, belief, or experience that can imprison you. Ultimately, remember that there is no thought, belief, or experience that can imprison you. Your soul is always truly free. Even those experiences you wish that you never had are the right experiences for your soul. With trust perpetually lubricating our lives, there truly can be no failure. Nobody can con you, lie to you, or steal from you when you're a, a trustaholic. In their desperate act of fear, they only steal from themselves. With trust, you are tapped into your highest intuition that always knows the way to love, abundance, and freedom. With trust, you become a truly abundant being who can see into the real future, forgive anyone who is misguided quite easily, and truly move on from all past wounding. When we let trust be our greatest guide, a miraculous life naturally unfolds. To find the greatest resource of trust inside ourselves, we must face and choose to face and embrace the doubt, the worry, and the fears that arise. We must dive beneath them, sink deeply inside ourselves, and consciously observe that this doubting, skeptical, negative mindset is not who we want to become. We must choose to continuously and gently set the fearful mind aside and open our hearts to the unknown. We must choose to be willing to take a leap of faith into the vast universe, open our secret jar of trusting lubricant, and spread it generously all over our lives. When you discover your inner source of trusting lubricant, apply it to all of those unpredictably fearful situations which you feel cannot be trusted. And sure, you will find resistance from these anxious, worried, and fearful parts. Yet, think of them as young, innocent, ignorant friends that simply need your loving assistance. These fear-based attitudes are simply trying to protect you from getting conned again, hurt again, keep you away from those you've done, who've done you wrong, let them know they've done their job, and that the real reason they're here is so you can let them go and come into feeling, seeing, and knowing this divine, all-powerful, manifesting, trusting being you truly are. <clears throat> Fear is that little dark room where negatives are developed. Michael Pritchard. Here's a few questions for you to ponder. How would you feel in 24 hours if you trusted each and every experience you had throughout your day? How would you really feel? Who would you become if you trusted every person you met and every conversation you had? 
What would your face look like and heart feel like five years from now if trust was your main operating feeling all day long, every day? Notice what happens to your body when you trust in the feeling of trust. All those controlling, anxious parts seem to instantly transform and let go. The truth is that your innermost being naturally desires to melt into each moment of existence and give, you, give itself over completely and freely. It craves to find the ease and simplicity in this life, which means knowing how, how do I trust in everything, every moment, and everyone is aligned with the divine. This lubricating feeling is all about letting go of control. It's about dropping our attachment to our story of who we are and who we are not. It means we welcome the past and the future, yet we are free from it. We welcome the past and the future, yet we are free from it. We have no attachments. We have no expectations. We don't need to be in control of this moment of our lives because the universe is guiding, <clears throat> excuse me, guiding your vessel. The lubricated life is about surrendering and opening to what is inside you right now. And the mind can be completely obsessive and fanatical. It tries to change things, manipulate people, and resist the natural flow of energy that is moving through our world. Sometimes the mind can become such a control freak that we feel like we can't find peace and relaxation, no matter what we do. The easiest way to unlock and unblock the mind is always to apply a liberal lubricating dose of trust. This wonderful, magnificent energy will instantly loosen the rusty bolt lock hold the mind has on life. In a moment, a hardened situation can magically open up and allow your entire energy field to relax and soften. And once the mind can trust and trust, we can surrender to that spiritual source which is beyond the mind. As the mind starts the habit of trusting, the resistance to that worst person or circumstance disappears, and we create an opening for the universe to support us in developing a more desirable situation. The fragrance of flowers spreads only in the direction of the wind, but the goodness of a person spreads in all directions. The fragrance of flowers spreads only in the direction of the wind, but the goodness of a person spreads in all directions, unknown. Your heart is going to sing with joy at all the wonderful things that are about to occur. This is a highly enlightening experience. And it will also assist you through the most fearful, desperate, life-challenging situations you may be facing right now. Just remember that fear is that little dark room where negatives are developed. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I am sure that we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax our bodies from head to toe, inside and out. Release, let go, detach. Feel yourself floating out of the mind, period, out, out of the mind. Just being and continually focus on the trust that you have with yourself. That's where it begins. 
and all this external stuff that we're all flooded with on a continual basis. It is only there if we want to interact with it. So anything that you're carrying, and only you know what it is, whatever it may be, it could be anything you've picked up in the last 24 hours. You know, that little tiny thing that comes in, and it just sounds like a little tiny squeak, but it's there. They say, oh, you got to worry about this. you got to worry about this. you got to wonder about this. Oh, you got to worry about that. you got to worry about that. You know, it's a little incessant little noise. It's just kind of... There's a vibrational frequency that comes in. And you let it go. The body responds too. Because when you let all that stuff go, expectations of the future, of the, you know, the past, you know, attachments to anything. And you just say, I have no need to be attached or have any expectations. The body loves that because it then responds in kind by just letting go. Tension. The body holds on to tension that you deliver to it. So that's why the body, that's why a lot of people have a very difficult time having good rest. That's why they always have a difficult time with just absolutely re being doing nothing and not feeling bad about it or guilty about it but embracing it and relishing it and celebrating it and trusting it. So as the body relaxes and eases, it's almost like you're opening the door, you are in the mind and in the ego, and you open the door and you start to leave as the body relaxes. You have no interest in messing with the mind. You really don't. Your interest is, is to oversee the mind, oversee the ego, but not to go into it where it then becomes your dictator. So as you relax your body, you'll feel your shoulders drop, you'll feel your face unbunch, you know, your forehead relax. You'll feel a lot of ease And then you take the next step. You move into the now. And the now is really all we have. The now is your continuing stepping out of the mind, out of the ego, out of subconscious mind. Why would you even want to interact with it when you can oversee it? You can direct it. Use it as an asset rather than a hindrance. So in the now, the space between heartbeats, you still the mind. You still the ego. You still the subconscious mind. And then you're in a place of peace, of quiet, of silence, of being. Now, some of us, all of us at times will reminisce in the past. We go back, we think about things, we, you know, we embrace them, we smile. You know, say to ourselves, wasn't that a wonderful time? Or, boy, that was a rough time. And then we leave, so, see, we don't stay there. We don't keep bringing it up. We leave it. And others of us will continually go into a future that's, that doesn't exist, that's not there. And we wonder and, and, and wait and wonder, and you know, when am I going to meet this person? When am I going to have enough money? When am I going to have this? What if this happens? What if that happens? And see all the, 
all the unnecessary energy that you're expending for that. Some of us will stay too far in the past too long that we will bring that past into a future that doesn't exist. We'll create that future from that past and we will relive that that past in that future. This is why so many people on this planet find themselves from different perspectives ending up in the same place. You don't understand, why do I keep ending up in the same place? So how do we stay in the now? Because we wander, because these thoughts come in, tens of thousands of them, every day, night, morning. And a lot of the times we just start being, we just we, we allow ourselves to be carried off by these thoughts. And we, 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 we move out of the now. And we're in the future, in the past. So you focus on your breath. Your breath is divine positive energy. It, it sustains the vessel that holds the kingdom of God within it. It focuses you, relaxes you, calms you, eases you, strengthens you. It's phenomenal. So whenever you're, whenever you find yourself wandering and into other thoughts, you say, okay, here I am wandering in other thoughts, so I'll focus on my breath and I'll be in the now. Doesn't it make sense to still the mind, the ego, the subconscious mind? Doesn't it make sense to, to keep yourself in the now, practice it enough where you automatically move into the now whenever these thoughts try to pull you away? So you relax the body and you're in the now. You know to focus on your breath to keep you in the now. You see the body relax, seated. Now you're watching your body, okay? You're in total peace, total relaxation as the body, but yet you're watching the body. And through the center of your body, you see these colored wheels of light starting right from the tip of your spine all the way to the top of your head. And they appear to be in a perfectly straight line. Now, sometimes you may see them where they're not perfectly straight, where some are out of place. Now, these energy vortexes, these chakras, these wheels of light, they're etheric in your physical body, which means that they are spiritual, so they connect you, your body, to the spiritual plane, the astral plane, to all the particles of existence. And running through them is your God force love light energy, your essence, your chi, your prana, your ki. And it flows effortlessly. But sometimes, you know, one of these chakras or a few of them are out of alignment and it can't, it becomes blocked. And you take your divine positive energy and you begin to move with your God force love light energy and your divine positive energy, your breath, and move them ever so softly and adjust so you understand why they're out of alignment. So we take these energies and we move them and we start as we watch with the root chakra, it's the red wheel of light, the Muladhara. And the root chakra, each of them have a different flower and a different geometrical shape in the center of that flower, and each of them different colors. So the root chakra, this deals with our survival. And if it's out of alignment, it means it is blocked by our fear. This is a wonderful way for each of us to tune our spirituality, our connection, our ground with the body 
and the connection with the spirit in the body, the God force, love, light, energy. And then we move to the orange wheel of light. This is the sacral chakra, the Vadasthana. And this deals with our pleasure. But if it's out of alignment, a little bit crooked, it is because it is blocked by our guilt. So we address the guilt and we find out why we have the guilt so that we can unblock that so that our chi and our divine positive energy can flow easily through each one. Then we move to the golden yellow wheel of light, which is the solar plexus chakra, the Manapura. This deals with our willpower. And if it is crooked, that means it's being blocked by our shame. So we address what the shame is. So we can unblock it. And then we move to the emerald green wheel of light, which is the heart chakra, the Anahata. And this deals with our love. And it is blocked by our grief. So if it's crooked or it's out of balance, then we tend to the grief so that we can eliminate the grief so that this energy can flow freely and not be blocked. And then we move to the blue wheel of light, the throat chakra, the Vishuddha. This deals with our truth. And it is blocked by our lies. So if we see this crooked we know that we, we, have, we tend to the lies to eliminate the lies so that this can be dealing just with the truth and that energy can flow once again unobstructed. And then we move to the indigo wheel of light, the third eye chakra, the ajna. And this deals with our insight. And it is blocked by our illusion. So if this is out of alignment, and we go to the illusion that we have been tricked or seduced into, and we eliminate it so that our insight can flow freely. Then we move to the crown chakra, the violet wheel of light, the sahasra. This deals with our cosmic energy, and it is blocked by our ego attachment. So when we understand this, and if our crown chakra is out of alignment, a lot of things can take place. So when that happens, we go to the ego attachment and we release that attachment and we step outside the ego so that this wonderful divine positive energy and the God force love light energy can flow effortlessly through our entire physical form. And we brought both of these to the top of our heads to the crown chakra. And we've realigned our chakras in a perfectly straight line. And then we hold this energy briefly. We are love. We are light. We are God. And in that three seconds... We compress and condense these energies into pure liquid energy, omnipotently powerful. And we release it over our pineal gland. Our pineal gland is very important to us while we're in physical form. When it's in full function, it connects us to all the particles of existence. All that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. The astral plane, the spiritual plane. So we do desire it to be fully functional. So you view it in your heart, mind, motion picture as a rose, whatever. Well, however you see it. I see it as a green ball, a rosebud. And when I release this pure liquid energy over it, it just immediately expands into a massive rose, multicolored petals, a phenomenal fragrance, and this shimmer wave of deep, eternal peace. No care, no concern, no attachment, no expectations. Just floating in this deep, eternal peace of the God that you are, that all of us are. No distraction from any externalities at all. No trick 
by the ego or the mind. And it's always there, omnipresent, always, eternal. We, we do understand that we are consciously aware that we're of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. And we know that these bodies that we're in, and the heart mind, and the ego mind, subconscious mind, and our higher self, our spirit and soul, our God force love light energy, all one. And we also consciously aware that we are heaven on this earth. And that every step we take, we're creating paradise. So we have a, this beautiful planet that we're transforming into a higher and higher and higher vibrational frequency of deep eternal love and gratitude. So we're consciously aware of this. And we also are learning to shine our light, our God force love light energy outward, flooding everyone, all of our brothers and sisters, whether they're awake or asleep, head to toe, inside now, all life, the highest supreme value in the universes. And we're shining our light with deep eternal joy and bliss and peace and tranquility and benevolence and gentleness and kindness and generosity and humbleness is flooding everything eternally, always, consciously, transforming all the frequencies into higher and higher and higher frequencies of deep eternal love and gratitude. This is a complete liberation of this planet and its entire civilization. So we're collective consciousness. And parts of the collective consciousness are asleep. Other parts are awake. So we call out to other facets, other aspects of ourselves, of the one. To all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming of the circle of light and the complete liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now. Now, they come in the Googleplexes, and one Googleplex fills this entire universe. They come in trillions of Googleplexes from every direction. And they consciously are with us now. We have the archangels and the ascended masters. Seraphim, cherubim, archetypes. The ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Sananda, Jesus Christ, Elmoria, Abundantia, Pell, Thoth, Yahweh, Yeshua, many, many, many more. Now, both of them, like the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, they vibrate at a different frequency than we do, so we don't see them like we see each other. But we meet them. We interact with them in this life more than once. Sometimes it, it, we, we recognize. Other times it just passes by. But you realize that they're always sending us a message, and it always ends up one way from different directions. It is absolutely spectacular and marvelous to be alive in these bodies. Isn't it wonderful? And they're there reminding us that it is wonderful, always, no matter what we experience in these bodies. So they're teaching us reminding us, as we teach them and remind them. Now, a large number can surround any one of us at any one time. 
and the tens of thousands because of the fact that because of their vibrational frequency, they can house a large number in a small area. Ascended masters are those who have mastered ascension into physical form, out of physical form, hold pure consciousness, God form. We have ascended into physical form, are mastering physical form, creating our experiences to perfect our creation, and them learning that we are the light. And that when we leave these bodies, we don't follow the light because we are the light. We are the God force love light energy. Then we call out to all of the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, beneath earth, Agartha. All these civilizations, yet only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest, of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest, of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now, in this meditation, of forming the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. And they come in the billions, and they are consciously with us now. We call upon all the off-worlders, all the galactics, all the celestials. There's just count, un, just uncountable numbers in all the universes and all existences. And we're only familiar with a smidgen of them because over a thousand travel through this solar system every day. Trillions travel throughout the universes every day. And the ones that we're somewhat familiar with, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Andromedans, the Arcturians, the Felines, the Zeta Reticuli, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion, many, many, many more. Now we understand that only those out of all of these who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. Now they've been assisting us in our evolution, in our enlightenment, in our ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they come in uncountable numbers, and consciously, they are with us now. We call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. Only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the forming of this circle of light and the complete liberation of this planet. And they come in the billions and they consciously are with us now. We call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now, this meditation, full liberation of this planet. Only those who are, who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, this meditation form of the circle of light and the complete liberation of this planet. Now, we're only familiar with just a little bit of them. They come in color, shape, sizes, forms, configurations, which we've never seen before. And the ones that we're somewhat familiar with, the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, wood, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur. Many, many, many more. 
And in the trillions, they are with us now consciously. Arm in arm, hand in hand, all one. All of our gods, together, one. We're full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one, and we're all love, and we're all God, and our God force, love, light, energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. All of us form a massive circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This light is our God force, love light energy, deep within our core. It is who and what we are. It is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. It would take over a thousand billion suns in this, in this solar system alone to even compare or come close to the radiance. And we're flooding everything, eternally, always, head to toe, inside and out. All life, the highest supreme value in the universe, all of our brothers and sisters awake or asleep, unending with this pure, deep, eternal love. We begin to ascend above the planet. This is a circle of light, illuminating, flooding everything. As we do, we're met with this massive ocean of glitter, reflecting trillions of vibrant colors everywhere. And we look closely enough and we see these perfectly shaped mirrors reflecting all of us gathered for this meditation. All the facets, all the different aspects of the one, us, the collective consciousness. All learning, all teaching each other in different ways, different shapes, different forms, different directions. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that reminds us all that we are the power of healing. We're then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is the column of light that reminds us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. And we're met with the white fire. This is a column of light that reminds each and every one of us that we are imbued head to toe, inside and out, <coughs> with our God force love light energy. This is eternal. It is always. <coughs> Excuse me. No demons, no attachments, no lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, no force, no external energies, nothing can harm us ever, ever. But only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, through greed, envy, lust, expectations, attachments, anger, hatred, fear, worry. You will create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. If you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with the purple transmuting flame. This is the column of light that reminds us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame, we can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, send in the pure consciousness where they are vanished, gone completely, 
We're then met with the violet ray. This is a column of light that reminds us all that we can bring in the violet ray right after the purple transmuting flame. We can cleanse, purify where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, restoring our vibrational frequency of deep eternal love and gratitude and sealing the breach. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is a column of light that reminds each and every one of us that we are the sun, the sunlight, the sun sets, the sun rises, the clouds, the sky, the trees, the forests, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the animals, the soils, everything, the snowfall. So when you see a sunset and you're in awe of its beauty, taken aback, breathless, it is you that you're in awe of, taken aback, of the beauty and divinity that you are. And this is a reflection of the God within you. We continue to levitate above the planets. Some of us, decide to step outside our physical forms, float effortlessly above them once we're carrying physical forms. And we come across this massive crystalline light tower. We created this tower. It's larger than the solar system. In the center of the column, we see this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere, we see this beautiful golden white shimmering light. And it's sending out, we watch as it sends out these massive waves of shimmering glitter that penetrates, saturates all of us from head to toe inside now. This is with deep, pure, eternal love. And then surrounding it are these beautiful bands of shimmering light, different colors, that are also sending waves, saturating all of us from head to toe. And these make up gratitude. They make up gentleness, kindness, peace, joy, bliss, tranquility, benevolence, well-being, wealth, abundance. And they're all reflections of us, of who and what we truly are in the core of our being. At the top, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, flooding us all with deep, pure, eternal love. Eternally, always. We are the drops of this golden ocean. We hold the essence of this golden ocean. The ocean is the drops, and the drops are the ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It says center circle. We created this sphere all nearly three years ago. It holds well over 1,200 of our meditations in perpetual motion. Hundreds of millions of us on and off world. And our true intent with the love that we all are, collective consciousness, is the total liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. And moving into a dimension of a higher and higher and higher frequency, a deep eternal love and gratitude. You can feel it whenever you choose. Is move into silence outside the ego. And remember that fear is that little dark room where negatives are developed. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
send to the now. fragrance of flowers spreads only in the direction again, that the goodness of a person spreads in all directions. If this will be for the rest of the day and for the evening, all in morning, it will be done here by that February 12th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global day.